Play-Doh. And I want this to be the first in a series of talks that address canonical thinkers. Right? So the idea of justice is an old and, 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 and noble idea in our culture. And Plato is one of the most important figures in this long 2,000 year Western tradition. And he had some powerful ideas about justice. These ancient folks, when they talked about justice, it was a personal virtue. And this talk is going to focus on that idea. Aristotle, the Aristotle talk, I'm going to get into the notion of distributive justice. Uh, and I'm going to talk about his concept of natural slaves. Um, in March, I'm going to talk about Mahavera, who is the founder of um, the notion of Ahisma and the Jain religion. So we'll try to have for you some um, very important philosopher, uh, religious leader, who has given a foundational idea that contributes to the way we today think about the notion of justice. Um, okay, so today's talk is entitled Plato's Ideal of Justice as Self-Mastery and His Critiques of Oligarchy, Democracy, and Tyranny. Okay, so what's that? He didn't like anything. <laughs> Plato didn't like anything? Democracy, tyranny, and oligarchy, isn't that the cover letter? Uh, he, you know, that's a perfect place to start. I want to mention, to make it very clear, that Plato lived in a democracy. Well, what they thought was a democracy, okay? Um, uh, they excluded a lot of people in their conception. But amongst the power brokers that existed at the time, what they were doing in being democratic was extremely radical. Um, and I think it bears um, reflecting on, even though Plato is incredibly crit critical of democracies, it's doubtful that he would have the freedom and the opportunity to express the, uh, the wonderful ideas he did express if he wasn't in that kind of society. Okay. Um, so, Plato's ideal of justice, uh, first off, uh, I've used the word ideal, and I need to address the ambiguity of the term. So, when we use the word ideal, we often think of something that is um, to be aspiring after, right? And uh, that's probably a helpful way to think of it. Um, but Plato, in his theory of forms, he had the idea that the foundation for our reality were what I'd like to call archetypes. Please zip close the outside door because we have heat. We want to keep the heat inside here. All right, so, um, so I'll try to remember to say this: that the, when I when I refer to the things that are the foundation of reality, I'll try to remember to use the word archetype. So Plato thought that there was an archetype of justice. And this archetype of justice made possible the many different particular manifestations of justice that could be in the world. The main place that he saw justice manifesting itself was in the character of a person. But it could also manifest itself in the character of an institution. Now today, the way we speak, we typically use the word justice to talk about institutions. The way John Rawls puts it in the theory of justice is he says, justice is the first virtue of institutions, right? And it's also the highest praise. So to say of something that it is just, of an institution, is to give it the highest praise that we can give. Now, in the day that Plato was writing and the topic in the Republic, which is the, the text that I'm honing in on here, the discussion starts with an argument about what justice really is. In the first book of the Republic, there's a battle between basically two positions. Um, the position that's carried by Thrasymachos, who was a sophist at the time, he was, he was an actually existing person, um, and he took the position that justice was strength or power, what? right? And it's something like might makes right. And he was really thinking at, the, at, the, at a time 
when this was this was a viable conception of justice. Uh, Plato, uh, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle really pushed the notion of justice into a very moral direction. Whereas prior to that, it more had the connotation of the heroic society that the Greeks came out of. And it meant something more along the lines that Thrasymachus was arguing, which is that it was a kind of greatness and power. Now, they wanted to say that true greatness and power was morally informed. So the, 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 this long book, this long dialogue starts with an argument, two sides of the question, what is justice? One was justice is strength. The other said, Socrates, justice is goodness. This is the first book. And this gets, this gets developed and challenged, right? So two of Plato's actual <laughs> brothers, Glaucon and Adiamantus, challenge Socrates. They say, you know, you defeated Thrasymachos there. You showed that his position was weak, but we're not convinced. And they deepen the, the, cha the, the position that Thrasymachos had. And uh, Glaucon produced the idea of the Ring of Gyges. He said, what if people were invisible? And he means invisibility in a very special way, I think. Um, he means, what if no one ever knew the bad things that you did? What if when you did bad things, they could never know that you did the bad things, and they could only see the good things you did, right? Um, what if you were invisible from criticism, in another sense? Right? Um, you could get into all kinds of mischief, and no one would ever know. And the thought experiment was, who wouldn't do that? <coughs> Who, given the power to escape negative criticism, wouldn't do all manner of things to gratify themselves? Which goes back to the notion that justice is a kind of strength, power, right? The ruling virtue, justice, was about having power. And power didn't apologize, right? Um, Adiamantus came and added to that. And he said, well, not only um, do we really is there a real force to this idea that justice is power? But he, he says, look at the way we educate our children. Right? We tell them to do things that are advantageous, that have power accrue to them. We tell them to avoid you know, looking bad and, and so forth. I'm not uh, at, at being terribly accurate here, but this is the gist of what he said. Uh, so that's where the, the, the Republic begins. Uh, this is the second book now. and then. Uh, Socrates goes and starts constructing what is called the ideal city in speech. Now, a note for you all, that's something of a scholarly note. In, a, in answering the question of what justice is and what the ideal society is, uh, Plato, through the mouthpiece of Socrates, makes it clear that he, is that Roy? Yeah, that's <laughs> oh man! <laughs> He wants to come in and get in. in. <laughs> 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 <laughs>